Hey guys, this is James here. Uh, today we're gonna have a little discussion on writing for digital media, specifically about how to start your video, mainly focused around the idea of voice and style. Uh, just like with a certain writing, if you think about the authors and the books and the types of um, yeah, authors that you like reading from, you know they have certain styles of writing. Um, and they have certain ways of, of doing things. Um, they have certain language they use. And we get used to that, right? Um, think about the uh, directors that you like uh, for movies. Um, I went and saw uh, Tenant by Christopher Nolan. Uh, and he has a very specific style, right? And he has these kind of thought-provoking films. And he uses a lot of the same actors over and over again and uh, deals with uh, similar themes. And, <clears throat> and so when you're creating a video, right now you guys are going to be creating your digital narrative, right? And if you have a only a little bit of experience with video or no experience with video, you might think, you know, how do I, how do I start working on this thing, right? Where do I, where do I begin? And so I want to just talk about voice and and types of of video and 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 ways and of creating these videos and theme and all of this that kind of comes together to create like your personal way of creating video because much like writing and how we all have like a unique voice in writing and we all have unique personalities we also have um unique way that we can all be uh, creative with videography with as videographers okay um so first of all, I do want to say that the way that the video uh, is created, the voice, the, the theme, the method, um, all of that will depend a bit on the story. Okay, it'll, it'll, there, are, there are some limitations that you're going to have as, as a student. Okay, um, I'm, you know, for example, you're not going to be producing a Hollywood film, <laughs> right? Hollywood quality. Um, and you might actually want to come up with the story ideas before you think about the video style and voice, but you do need to mention how you plan on shooting your, your story uh, in your storyboard. And so the storyboard is, is really, really important. Um, and you definitely need to make sure you figure out, you know, you know what you want your story to be. Um, and so you can create your voice uh, at the same time in the storyboard, um, but, it might change depending on your on the story that you want to tell right and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later and so this video isn't going super deep into story storytelling techniques for those you can check out the powerpoints on our moodle um but i want you guys to i still think it's quite important to start thinking about the way um you'll create the video um you know with your storyboard the the voice and the style that will that will kind of come through this video and we're going to look at some examples okay um and so when you're thinking about this you're going to need to start asking yourself questions um first of all obviously like i said the story you'll, you'll want to figure out like what story you want to tell with our three themes um the four specific details there obviously check out the assignment guidelines again i'm not going to go into detail about that um but for example like will you be filming scenes like, are you going to be actually sitting down with a, with a camera, with your um, phone? Are you going to actually be like the, the cinematographer? Are you going to be shooting these scenes? Um, do you prefer to use other clips online? Part of fair use um, rules online is you can use footage from, you know, the Avengers. You could use footage from uh, friends. You could use footage from other YouTube channels if you do it uh, um, in, in a way that is considered fair use. And so what that just means is that you have to produce something different. You can't simply just copy that and put it on your video. Um, you might uh, find a way to use these, these scenes in a way that's creative. And we're gonna look at some examples of those. And likely you guys have already seen those examples, but we'll look at some, okay? Um, maybe you're gonna use something uh, between those. Maybe you're gonna use clips of other things that you find online as well as scenes that you shoot yourself okay um let's let's actually look at a couple examples now okay um 
well, another one, you know, is like the uh, text on screen or like graphics on screen or voiceover. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can tell a story. And the, those are not the only ways, right? Um, but I first want us to kind of get a sense of what that looks like by checking this out right here. Okay, so one of uh, our previous, um, Brandon Brock's previous students created some videos uh, for the Writing Center program, okay? Um, this one right here is for technical and professional writing, which I actually also teach. Um, take a look at her uh, video focusing on what you would think her voice is. We're not going to watch the whole video. We'll watch some of it. Her voice and her style. Okay, what is her voice of with video here? All right, so, so far we see no, f she didn't shoot any of this footage. So a lot of, a lot of, all of this is either clips from movies or still images. And we've got no voiceover, but we do have uh, um, <clears throat> text on the screen, right? We have music and if we were to say the, the thing that I immediately noticed, well, actually, before we, we, we explain, let's, let's dive into one that actually is a, a little bit different, but similar. So this is, um, I guess I should explain. She created these videos for us for the writing center program. This is for technical and professional writing. She also did one for writing for digital media. You guys may have already seen this again. See if you can see a connection, uh, an underlying voice, uh, that, is in both this video and the previous one. Look at that handsome guy. Mm, got some beats. So we noticed some differences so far, right? The first video had kind of this, uh, it almost sounded to me personally Russian. Um, I don't know that it felt a little Russian. Um, this one has some like chill, chill vibes with some like pretty beady beats in these uh, headphones here. Um, and the other difference that I noticed is she actually brought in footage and used some kind of uh, a couple of pretty, pretty nice uh, um I think there was a, there was like a behind, behind Brandon tracking shot and, you know, an extreme close up, things like that. Um, as well as a lot of screen, screen catcher footage here, right? Like this is all screen, screen catcher. All right, so we see some some consistency here from the previous video. She definitely likes to use um, these texts over the screen here, okay, um, over voiceover, right? One of the other things that you'll notice is that her her videos have a lot of energy because they're very quick. Things are happening really fast. You got loud music. It might, you know, it might be uh, hip hop or kind of more classical stuff, but whatever it is, it, there's a lot of energy and it's driving things and things are happening quickly. Things are moving fastly. Um, um, fastly, is that a word? <laughs> uh, we'll stick with quickly. And um, she made another one here. I'm guessing you guys can start to kind of see her theme even more, okay? So she has this style, um, this voice, 
And I think we can kind of see it. It doesn't have to, you don't have to make the same video every single time. And in fact, if you want to go against what you, maybe you already have like a voice as a videographer, but you want to try something new, like that is perfectly fine. All this is, all I'm trying to do is get you guys to see the options of what a video could be. And also to kind of talk about how you can maybe find that voice. And I think that voice is going to continue to modify your whole life. If you, you know, make video your whole life, just like my, my voice, as far as writing goes, will be continually modifying your whole life. Right. So we're not trying to keep it the same. Um, let's look at a couple other examples. Um, yeah, I don't want to share that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here's an interesting one. So if you guys follow Rhett and Link, uh, Good Mythical Morning, they are one of the biggest online daily YouTube. Um, sh they do one of the biggest online daily YouTube shows. Uh, for this, uh, they every couple of years, they'll like update their intro. So like this little intro right here. Now, um, so that changes, but they often, you know, have like consistency in their background and, and right here, this is from 2007 and they've been doing good mythical morning at least since 2000, what, I don't know, 11, 10, maybe earlier. Um, let's hear what they have to say just real quick. Okay. We're going to skip this sudden secret here. So they have like a community, right? And they have a lot of, you know, they have 10 million or however many, I don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, well, this is Good Mythical More. So it's their side channel has 4 million. Their actual channel probably has a lot more. So Rhett here, this guy on the, on the, on our left here, jokingly said there was feedback because what happened is everyone freaked out when they changed uh, to uh, this new studio, okay? And one of the main things they freaked out about was the lighting. So this is gonna sound funny, but a lot of people did not like the fact that this YouTube channel changed their lighting because they had a, a voice and a theme and a style of a video and their, their users got used to it. Now I, I think it's fine like to change things. What, what I'm trying to show you guys is that uh, as a, as creators, as videographers, you build this this uh, voice and this this style, and um, in this case, when they changed it, people got quite upset, right? Um, you you can get stuck in that rut uh, where your um, your uh, people who consume your product expect you to always do that thing, right? Like if Stephen King were to produce a romance, I don't know if he has, but I'm guessing if he produced like a romance novel, like his diehard fans would be upset. They'd be like, this is not horror, right? Now, that's not an argument that I'm, I'm wanting to go down. Again, I'm just trying to show you guys uh, the difference. So this is the, the style of, this is the color right here, the color palette that they went with that everyone was much happier about. And this is back to their original color palette mostly. And so they kind of, they, they heard their audience, their audience said, Hey, we, we like your, we like your style. We like how it's, you know, how it has been done. And now that it's different, it's weird for us. And so they were like, yeah, let's, let's go back. And so this, you can see this video here. This was shot a few days ago, right? Or produced, uh, uploaded a few days ago. Um, and you can see that the colors are different, right? Um, there are, uh, let's see here. Uh, one I want to show you guys connected to our idea around um, how the types of ways that you'll be filming. Will you be actually shooting those scenes um, or will you be uh, using clips from other um, sources? Okay, so... Uh, the nerd writer 
he is the the guy that produced the TED talk um, that I shared on our Moodle. If you're in my class, um, <clears throat> you're welcome to go to YouTube, type in Nerdwriter One TED Talk, um, maybe like video essay, and there's a lot of good information there about video. Um, but one thing he does is he has certain themes and ideas, and he is rarely in his own videos. Sometimes he'll be at the end screen, um, but I have rarely seen him in his videos, though I don't watch every single video. Uh, let's look at it real quick. No, thank you. We don't want to hear. All right. I don't want that either. Come on. All right. Have you guys seen this one? That's good. So this is what the filmmaker does, or this is what the nerd writer does here on his YouTube channel is he takes apart certain concepts, very, very focused ideas. So this isn't just like a review of Parasite, right? It's not just saying Parasite is a good, good movie. He's saying Parasite's perfect montage. So he's focusing specifically on that thing. And then he's using clips from this uh, movie throughout the whole thing. Um, it's not loading here. Uh, if we were to go to something a little bit more general, so not focused on parasite, for example, um, let's look at, let's look at, let's look at one of them here. Enter. Come on. You're going to make me type in the whole thing. Did I spell it right? Um, Weaponized. I did not spell weaponized correctly. There we go. All right. So this is another example here. We're skipping ahead a little bit, okay? So we started with Beauty and the Beast. Now we're on Star Wars. And like I said, fair trade, you don't want to just show long clips of certain movies. And sometimes you may need to modify them in different ways um, because Disney and like Nintendo are known for copyright claiming a YouTube video. If you're worried about that, you can always make the video unlisted and it's not going to be like released. Usually YouTube nowadays, if you take some, some music that's not yours, or a video that's not yours, and you use it in a fair use way, uh, they'll just simply put ads with the video. So like if you use, you know, an Eminem song, they'll just put like an Eminem ad underneath the video and say like, you know, click here to, to buy the song. Um, and you might not get any royalties from it. You might not be able to monetize the video yourself, but you can still produce it. Um, and then any monetization stuff from that video might just go to Eminem directly. Um, or, you know, whoever, whatever company that is. But here we're, we're interplaying, we're inter, we're splicing together different clips from different movies. We have, uh, the nerd writer's voice over, and then we have things like this. Right. And so he's using these like, and it's supposed to be a little bit funny. Right. And I mean, maybe not in like a laugh out loud way but kind of funny in that it was like the, it's the sound um, here in Las Vegas. I'm in Las Vegas. Um, it's the sound of the, the gambling machines, right? In the casinos. Now, I, I don't necessarily have a certain rule and I don't know what the rule is with fair use. It's, it is a bit vague on how many seconds you can use of this of this clip um, of each of these clips like i said certain companies have been known to be very intense about 
any clips use at all, like like Nintendo, like I said, um, from what I hear is pretty intense about that. Um, and so you do want to be careful with with that. And so you're going to not just show long clips of, of movies usually, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then, so, so I've, I've shown you, um, I've shown you a, a variety of different types of videos here. Okay. So, um, we've got like certain styles where it's like really fast. Then you have like these kind of more just like talking head style. This is just a news, a news YouTuber right here. Right. So you guys get that, you know, it's kind of just like a talking head, like sort of what I'm doing. Obviously his production is a little bit better than mine, although I have Elvis back here. That's pretty cool. Um, and then he inter intersplices there. Um, he cuts in uh, both still images as well as video. Um, <clears throat> and even within the video where we can see his face, we have, you know, all these different pictures on all of the corners here. And then he has just certain methods of of bringing in certain uh, sections of his new show, right? So this is called TIA Today in Awesome. And with this, he has that background of his face on the blue. And then you have like this, the, the, the white square there. And then even smaller, you have the actual um, clip, right? And again you can you're you're welcome to find certain youtubers that you you like that you value that you respect and to take parts of what they do and and try to do it in your own way you don't you don't necessarily want to directly just copy other people um you want to do it in your own unique style but sometimes you copy a little bit to like discover your own method um I have a couple of YouTube channels um, <clears throat> and uh, one of my, one of the ones that I like is just a YouTube channel about adventures. I went on a long hike and I did a daily vlog of it. Um, it's a little bit embarrassing for me to watch in front of all of you guys, but let's do it anyways. Cause why not? Um, look at that weirdo. Oh, Hey, look, it restarted. I guess it, oh, there we go. What a nerd. We're just going to watch a tiny bit here. So right here, I'm about to intersplice a bunch of clips of daily vlogging or like adventure vloggers that I have followed, that I've watched, that I might still follow. Um, <clears throat> And a lot of these people that you're about to see are people that I've kind of learned from and I've taken certain things that I've liked from, okay? So in my argument that I'm making in this video is like, you know, I'm, I'm, I see what these guys are doing, but I have something unique, right? Um, and so I used a lot of what they did, but I also have like my unique style, okay? And now another thing that you need to consider when you're thinking about uh, what you want to do, here, let me stop sharing. Um, when you're thinking about what, you're, what you want to do is certain uh, limitations. So as a hiker, so I, I hiked the PCT and I daily vlogged it. Um, I quickly realized that carrying a DSLR camera was too heavy because I had to hike 700 miles, right? Too heavy. So I got rid of it. I kept my cell phone and a GoPro. I also had the trekking poles, right? When you're walking the sticks. Um, and I thought, oh, like these sticks are really handy. Like I could put my GoPro on that thing, right? So these are like the limitations of being in the wilderness by myself and trying to figure out how to produce this content to be the editor, to be the, to be the actor, you know, whatever, to be everything. Um, and so I was like, oh, I'm gonna use these trekking poles. And so I used the trekking poles to get kind of interesting shots where I'd have the trekking pole above me or in front of me and you would get like the nice shot and then I could speed it up or slow it down. Um, and this style actually came out of partly my limitations. And so be okay with your limitations as an editor, if you're not good or as a, a videographer or, or like a cinematographer or as an actor, like 
embrace those limitations. Like you can get better at those things, but it's okay to have limitations. And then think about what your strengths are. Like if you're, if you're a really good video editor and you're like a, you're, you know, big into computers, maybe you're a computer scientist or, or you like, or you like computers a lot. Maybe you want to focus on the editing part. Um, I would say that uh, I'm sorry, I forget her name, but the student that we looked at, Brandon Brock's student that made our technical writing and digital media videos, it was very fast paced, high energy, right? A lot of editing went into that. And so I would say that she probably spent more than an hour per minute on the editing there because she, that's maybe her, in fact, I know that that is her strength. I've talked to her before. She's not necessarily much of a, uh, again, I, I, I think she's not necessarily much of a cinematographer and she's uh, a, fan of, a fan of editing a lot, right? And so she can get really good, she can spend a lot of time producing really good high quality uh, videos through editing. And so um, you want to think about that. What are, what are my limitations, right? Write these things down. What are my strengths? Um, and that can help you figure out how you'd want to tell the story. Um, a few other things. Let's see here. Um, one thing that you have to be uh, slightly aware of is that the w that your style will affect um, the theme. Okay. Uh, notice that again, the same student that made these uh, fast-paced videos. Were you were you sad watching this video? I mean, it was about you know university, which might make you sad, but they were really fast paced. They were high energy. So like they make it upbeat. It's like exciting. And she did that on purpose, right? These are kind of boring topics to be like, take my technical writing class. It's, it's maybe not very exciting to talk about emails and resumes, but she actually made it exciting, um, which is sort of the shows the power of, of videography, right? The power of media. And she may have even been able to pull out some pathetic appeals, some pathos, right? through that because of this high energy. And so do you want that in yours? You know, if, if she needed to create something sad, she would have to change that voice in some ways, not in every way, but she would have to, in some ways, like it might, might be better if it's slower paced, if things are moving a little bit slower, right? She could still focus on her, her strength as a videographer or as a editor. Um, but she would have to do it in a different way, right? Um, if you make a video with too much cinematic footage, for example, in slow motion, uh, I think a lot of videographers, including myself, love like beautifully crisp shots that are very cinematic with like shallow depth of field, right? Where the, the, the blur in the background and then like the slow motion, it's, 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 it's really cool, right? But if you, if you focus way too much on that, then people will be like, oh, wow, this guy's pretentious. Like, he's like, why? Like, it's unnecessary, right? And so you can mess up your theme in that way. People will start, maybe maybe you want to make it seem this dramatic thing, but it becomes over dramatic, right? And so these are the things that you need to think about when you're working on your voice. Maybe just consider like what you want your viewer to feel uh, is a question you should ask. What do you want your viewer to feel? Um, and so if you're doing something that's, that's positive, like the gratitude, something about gratitude, you may want them to feel good feelings. If you're doing it on waste and maybe it's a, it's a, it's a sad, um, a sad video or a video where you want people to think, um, then it, then you're going to want to change your voice slightly to fit that. Right. Um, and even we can, we can, we can continue on forever, like color, for example. Um, one thing that's that's fun to do is to check out um, color palettes of movies. I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but type in movie color palettes on Google, and you get these these uh, these cool uh, movie color palettes here. So this is Joker, um, and you can see that actually w even within the color correction of a film, you can create a certain uh, look, right? Um, <clears throat> and so depending on, on if you wanted like muted tones, right? Uh, if you want it to be very vibrant, I'm guessing, I'm guessing something that is wildly vibrant, lots of colors, you know, uh, you know, the HDR, right? High dynamic range uh, video. Imagine a movie like that, so colorful and it being very, very sad. Now that probably has happened and it probably will happen. 
but oftentimes when when scenes are sad they're muted right it's the 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 tones are cooler as we as we would say okay um um you know this one right here is supposed to look bleak uh and desperate and um you know hopeless maybe and so we're using a lot of these like these other these like really cool tones without much color um everything is kind of blending into each other uh he looks kind of the same color right here as the trees and so again i'm i'm i don't expect you guys to produce a hollywood style video you know it doesn't have to be um that amazing but you want to start thinking about all these things um <clears throat> just to kind of figure out like what is your voice all right so just as a brief overview um recap of what we've said uh we're trying to figure out how we want to make our video and hopefully you've figured out what theme you want to pick and the story that you like uh start creating that storyboard and then start thinking about how how you will actually shoot that and so you might want to start with your limitations like what 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 are you what do you struggle with as well as as well as your strengths and again you can make your limitation strengths if you work on them right but you may want to focus a little bit on on your strength uh if you don't know how to edit but you are great at computers then that could become a strength quickly right um and so maybe you want to focus on the the editing if you want to be in the video, you know, then you have to figure out how, how that's going to work, right? If you're going to get someone to, to shoot for you or if you're going to set the camera up. Um, again, there are, there are many ways to shoot these videos. And so it's really up to you to figure out what you want your voice to be, what you see kind of as your, as your image of how this, how this story will be told. And think about the different types of ways that you could tell it. You know, what, what movies, what scenes could I use? Uh, not just um, shooting all of the footage yourself. You can shoot all of it yourself 100%. If you want it to be all your own personal footage, great. If you don't want to be in, in it at all and you want to only have clips from the internet um, and movies, I will allow that for my class. Um, it still has to be effective, right? And so if I watch it and I see that it could have been more effective with you in it in simple ways, I'm, you know, I, I would talk to you about that it's possible that you could lose points for that but i do think you can produce like a good video without being in it yourself or maybe you just use your voice as a voiceover in it so so many different ways uh, and you want to think about the way that you want to create it the the themes that you what do you want what do you want your viewers to feel when they're watching this uh colors we can talk about i can i can make a video about color correction uh with video um if you'd like um, and yeah, limitations and strengths. All right. So I think I've covered most of those, uh, concepts, all of those ideas. Um, don't think that you have to suddenly know your voice right away. Uh, this could take a long time. Um, <clears throat> for my students, I shared kind of the videography experience that I've, I've had from, from my news stuff, working at uh, a little, uh, um, news uh, organization outside of Las Vegas, all the way up until like more in my, my more recent stuff where I, you know, I created a YouTube channel earlier this year about, uh, you know, analyzing Mormonism, a uh, religion that I used to belong to. And, you know, the production quality has gone up a lot and my, and my style has changed, but also I've modified it for this specific thing, right? So for this certain YouTube channel that I created, my style is going to be different than the other YouTube channel that I have uh, the, the hiking one, right. Um, the adventure one, that one's going to be very different style as well. And so you, you don't have to keep the same style, but it can be fun to discover your style and figure out what you're good at. And, um, that can set you apart on YouTube as well as just in, in the, you know, as a videographer in general. Um, but if you want to become a better videographer, oftentimes it's through finding your, your unique voice, right? If Christopher Nolan, had only ever kept to uh, copying other people's voices as he was becoming a filmmaker, we might not have the great films that, that, um, that he's made. I like, I like Christopher Nolan. Okay. All right. Thanks guys. This video is already long enough. So we're going to end it there. Let me know if you have any questions or if you need more help in figuring out any of these things. And I'll be making some more videos about uh, other parts of videography uh, later next week. 
All right. We'll see you guys later.